Hi, how are you, doctor? No, I'm good, and you? I'm doing great. How has been your Easter holiday? Ah, uh, we are locking down everything, but working. Ah, uh, good, doctor. Now, doctor, welcome to Entrepreneurship Couch. Thank you, thank you, Shepard. Uh, to our viewers, please welcome Dr. Naririre. Dr. Naririre is a registered psychologist, a chartered human resources practitioner, as well as a business coach. Uh, welcome once again, Doc, to the uh, platform. Thank you. Dr. Uh, we, have dis we have discovered that we cannot continue talking about entrepreneurship and running of businesses without... Uh, uh, discussing about a critical component of running of business, which is uh, human resources. And we would want to particularly talk about succession planning. What is succession planning, uh, Doc? Uh, thank you, Shepard. I think uh, to the common man, succession planning is just an acknowledgement that we are but uh, mere mortal beings. We don't live forever. Our energies, they do fed. And like even if we have got visions, we are going to die at some point. We are going to be tired at some point. So someone has to carry on with the work that we're doing after we are gone. So that's the common man kind of approach. But the technical definition of succession planning, we are talking about a human resources process, which is used to identify, develop, and groom new leaders who can replace old leaders as they leave organizations, either through retirement, death, or even resignations. Hmm. Thank, thanks very much, Doc. Now, Doc, uh, whilst we are talking about the technical explanation that you've just given us there, are organizations really practicing uh, this uh, uh, succession planning? Yeah, I can speak for organizations that I know. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are organizations uh, which do have uh, robust succession planning uh, practices and even policies. There are others which have got succession plans on paper, but they just pay lip service to it. And there are still others which don't even focus on succession planning. Okay. Uh, Doc, when we're talking about su uh, succession planning, do we just focus on uh, critical uh, skills only or succession planning applies right from the uh, shop floor guy to the CEO? I think like you, you, you have to focus on your mission critical kind of employees. Okay. Yes, in terms of workforce planning, you can plan for almost everyone, but like for, for, for value, you need to focus on the mission critical employees. So uh, like when we talk of succession planning, I, I, I would want you to focus on your, your leaders, for example. Mm, 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 mm. Now, Doc, uh, I've come across and I've seen other organizations where uh, at critical moments, they are forced to look outside and they end up having to recruit candidates that may not have been with the very organizations uh, where they would want to replace. How would an organization end up with such a scenario where they are ending up recruiting from outside? Uh, thanks, Shepard. It, it could be two things. Number one, maybe it's their strategy. They want to change the culture. So they want to prevent inbreeding. They want to bring fresh ideas from outside. So it's still okay. But then there could be a case whereby they don't have a potential successor amongst the current cadres. So again, they have to resort to external means. So in the second case, it's a succession planning gone wrong. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Doc, my next question then would focus on uh, where maybe succession planning is not done properly. Would it lead to something like a frustration for those that may have been aiming for higher costs? Definitely. Yeah. Every individual, they would like to grow and growing like uh, there are only few positions 
especially when you get to the top. So like you can have like five people vying for the same position. And obviously they are winners, they are losers, but like you should be a graceful loser. Mm, 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 mm. Now doc, I have come across certain organizations which tend to uh, favor for a lack of a better word or focusing on making sure that there are CEOs who are occupying the top post uh, or the apex of organizations are usually drawn from uh, maybe one particular uh, speciality or specialization. For example, in Zimbabwe, we've seen a lot of accountants ending up being CEOs. Would you still say they are uh, practicing succession planning? I, I, I wouldn't speak for any particular organization, mm -hmm. but uh, if they are doing it well, and if that chartered accountant is the best person for the role, so be it. If that HR person is best for the role and for the strategy, then so be it. Like we have organizations which have got engineers as CEOs, HR people as CEOs. Like recently, like we have got uh, the Lafaji CEO is coming from HR. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Doc, uh, succession planning seems to be a very critical element that a number of organizations need to seriously consider and practice. But I don't seem to see this happening with small businesses. What's your view being a business coach? Yeah, you, your observation is very right, Shepard. Like uh, when, when we get to small businesses, I think everything revolves around the founder. The founder is the procurement manager. The founder is the managing director, is an administrator, is the finance manager, is everything. Most small businesses fail to take that leap, I think, to grow their organizations and separate functions. And most of them fail to prepare for the eventuality. Like, we, like I indicated, we are mortal beings. At some point, like we get tired. So half the time, small organizations or small business owners they don't focus on succession planning at all, or they focus on it very late. That's why you find you have a successful business, but when the founder goes or dies, then it's done. In Shona, they say, Kufa Kwangu Zarova. Now, Doc, uh, we have also seen uh, other very big organizations, but as long as they are family run businesses or where the uh, a significant shareholder is a, a family led, they still end up appointing one of their own at the very top. Does, does succession planning also work in those uh, organizations? Yes, it, it does work. Just like uh, in a monarchy, <laughs> in a monarchy, you find uh, you get a king, but uh, the king has to come from the prince. Uh, the, the, the group of princes, uh, like in the royal family. So this is exactly the same point. For family-owned businesses, they, they may be this unwritten rule to say the CEO is going to come from amongst the guys. What is important is the question of whether that person who emerges as the CEO is the best person for that role. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, Doc, you are an expert when it comes to HR, but not only that, you also have been a business coach for some time. What other general HR advice and business advice that you may want to give to uh, other entrepreneurs and business uh, uh, people? I think for entrepreneurs, one thing that I've realized uh, working with them, interacting with them, is like uh, they tend, most of them tend to do everything by themselves and they find it very difficult to let go. So you only have 24 hours in a day and the only way you can expand is to delegate certain things to other people, learn to trust, learn to trust, learn to train and develop the people that you're working with. If you do that, then you can expand, you can afford, uh, like to go regional and yet like local locally like there's someone who's running your business so learn to let go mm. that's the advice that i may give 
Okay. Uh, Doc, maybe uh, the last uh, words and advice that we would want from you uh, being a business coach. We have had this uh, uh, pandemic, COVID-19. What's your own analysis and deduction? What's going to happen with companies? Uh, this COVID, uh, it has been a blessing in disguise for some companies. I think uh, there were companies which were now close to the graveyard, but they, they, they got an opportunity to, to, to start again. I believe uh, COVID gave an opportunity for all the companies to reset. It's kind of reset. We need to re-strategize. Most of the strategies that businesses had like won't be suitable in this kind of environment. Like the first thing business people should do is to revisit their strategies, revisit uh, their disaster management uh, strategies as well. They need to critically look at opportunities and also how their supply chains have been affected. Uh, like COVID started in China and China is the biggest player when it comes to to the supply chain of the world. So you may have been ordering from China, so your orders have been affected. Or you may have been exporting to China, like your, your, your orders have been affected as well. So you need to, to sit down and re-strategize as a business. Uh, thanks very much, Doc. I'm sure you would agree with me that being an, a, an HR expert, we can only derive uh, so much from your immense uh, technical expertise as uh, somebody who has been practicing HR as well as a business coach. I hope to invite you uh, once again uh, soon. Thank you, Shepard. Thank you very much for your time. Good.